welcome to episode number eight of the ISPC Tailboard Talks podcast. I'm your host, Mark. My co-host, Jerry, is again uh, actually on vacation this time. Uh, We'll get him back in the mix here at some point in the near future, but for today, it's just me again. We'll get into it in a little bit, but we have a special guest with us today that I think everybody's going to really enjoy hearing from, so we'll get to that in just a minute. First of all, I want to take the opportunity to give a shout out to our sponsor, who is Beer Meters. Beer Meters USA made, family operated manufacturer of almost 40 years. Beer produces the absolute highest quality, lineman proven, safe, dependable, accurate voltage and phasing meters, secondary testers, cable identification tools, grounds testers, high pot tools, custom temporary protective grounds, jumpers, and pole guards. Beermeters.com. Again, that's beermeters.com. B I E R E R meters.com. You can also reach out to their customer service if you need at customer underscore service at beermeters.com. And their phone number here at their office is 803 786 4839. Big thank you to Beer Meters. They're a huge supporter of ours just a great group of people to work with. So we appreciate beer meters uh, immensely. Our ISPC tailboard talks today is going to be around tool safety. Today, I have the pleasure of having on the show with me, Brent Jeffries uh, from Beer Meters. And I'll do a little formal introduction later with Brent. But for this part, uh, Brent and I are kind of going to have a conversation or discussion around tool safety. Rather than me leading this conversation. I'm going to kind of let Brent start out. And I know Brent has an excellent tool safety presentation that he does all around the country. So Brent, welcome. Glad to have you on here. Tool safety. So I know that's a big part of what you do, uh, being a tool manufacturer. I'm going to throw it over to you and kind of just kick it off with, you know, with your tool safety uh, message to everybody. Sure, you bet. Mark, and appreciate you doing this and setting up the podcast. And uh, this is probably a little unusual podcast where you are here doing a a ECOS Lineman Safety National Webinar. Most excellent, by the way. Thank you. That was really cool. And for you to be here at our Live Line Training Center and pleasure to be on board with your ISPC's podcast 008. I appreciate it, man. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. For the last eight years with Beer Meters, I've been going around the country doing our lineman safety tool training, and it's turned into line worker safety and tool competence now to get in a little more definition. So basically what I do is it's a non-biased training on how to properly use phasing meters, voltage detectors, indicators, wireless or corded. And it's non-biased and it, it's irregardless of the manufacturer tool, the tester that your line crew would, would be using, regardless of location, regardless of nationality. The tool training is exactly the same as far as learning the knowledge and understanding the why behind those tools that they're using. So it's just a simple care functionality and letting them know and training them how the tool functions, period. It's, it's, so how many times has a lineman received new phasing set, new phasing sticks or a voltage indicator? They put them in the truck and they get a work order and they just go to work. And no one ever explains how the tools function, tools that they're using to trust their life with. Yeah. And they don't even they don't even know how they function. It's just getting that that understanding and education to them. And it's in such a way it's all hands on because obviously we manufacture these same tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to show up with these tools in our hands if if they don't have them on site already. And then we just touch them. We, we hold them. And before I was using a 40 foot trailer back feeding the 19935 pad mounts three phase uh, with a three phase 12208 generator. But now I'm starting to get a little little older and a little wiser. 
So I'll just fly in a lot less uh, risk, more efficient, yep. right? I'll just fly in with the tools and uh, a three KV power supply and a handheld power supply and do the exact same training minus a 40 foot trailer. Perfect. Yeah. And, and in this training, what we actually do is we go over a lot of scenarios, a lot of incidences using the tools and how they could have prevented false positives, false negatives. We go over proper body position, proper tool position, best work practices. Uh, we go over why short sticking is improper work practice, why while tool gloving, holding the tool with the hot stick adapter, the meter in your hand, how that's an unsafe work practice and never has been safe and, and why. And by using these power supplies right there on the, on the table in the conference room or, or right there at the service center with the linemen and line trucks all around us, wherever we can do it. And we show them the voltage flowing across their bodies, across their PPE, irregardless of if they had right. gloves on or not. And we are able to prove the voltage coupling capacitively with their bodies. If they have dielectric boots on or not, it's the same numbers. And we teach them and train them on how not only the tools function, but it's a great study and, and important. And it should be mandatory on how electricity even works, that, that ingredient that they right. work with that they can't see. And they get to see it with their eyes, the numbers on the tools. And it's just literally eye-opening. No, I, th I think um, I'm not aware. Um, I've been in the industry a while and have used plenty of different, um, you know, testing tools from different manufacturers. And I'm not aware of another effort by another tool manufacturer, no matter what it is, whether it's testing equipment, whether it's drills, whether it's, you know, saws, whatever the case may be, I'm not aware of another effort to educate people on the why and the how, and especially not only, you know, you're not just doing this around your specific tools, right? The, the theory that you give these mm -hmm. people about the environment they're in and when they're using these tools, what type of potential hazards could be introduced to the individual themselves. I'm just not aware that that's out there anywhere else, you know, uh, from some of the other big manufacturers, right? And so when it comes to the tool safety side of things, what's the, um, I guess, ammunition behind the message, right? Like why why you? Why did yeah. beer meters step up and say, listen, we mm -hmm. got to get people educated about how these things really work and what what potential uh, hazards are being introduced to themselves if they aren't using these things the right way? Well, that's that's a great question. Um, and th there's some history okay. behind that. Um, that's actually it's beautiful. It's poetic. It's an amazing story, honestly. What happened was, is when I started traveling around the country for about the first six months, it didn't take long. And when I was traveling and doing the training, it was basically focusing on the tools. And after about six months, it was about this time. Wow. It was about this time eight years ago. And I came to the folks and I told them almost, I think it was July, eight years ago, July. So it's almost to the day. I came to the folks and I said, look, I said, I'm out there and basically I'm showing our tools to these folks, the, our customers around the country, and we're showing how they use. But I'm hearing about incidences. I'm hearing through the grapevine, people getting hurt, people losing body parts, people not returning home ever again. Moms, moms losing their husbands, uh, the children losing their dads. And I said, it, it's just got to stop. And I said, I'm not a salesperson anyways. And I said, look, let me go around the country, start doing lineman safety and tool training for six months, eight years ago. And I said, if the customers like the training, if they see benefit in the training and it's focused on safety and understanding knowledge, then and if they like it, then I want to start doing this from now on. All right. So my, my dad, Walter Beer. Joe Beer, uh, at the time, my sister, she, she retired. My sister, who was working the company, 
My nephew works here. And they agreed, let's give it six months and see if there's fruit, see if there's benefit for our customers. And of course, you know, our name gets out there. That's fine. That's a byproduct, right, of the main thing. So let's just try it. So after six months, Mark, I, could, I barely had time. I was not hardly at home. I, I mean, except for the weekends. And um, for seven years, well, for six years, there'll be a little more story later on about what happened next. It's evolving. Um, so for six years, it's like I'm traveling. I'm gone from home a lot of times through the summers, um, away from my wife, away from my children. And I'm on the road doing this training all around the country. You know, we could put a, a, a full page ad in a magazine. OK, you'll get some recognition, a little expensive, or we could go to the next step. We could be the full page ad in front of their face. That's what we did for six years. Solid. And um, because we're a family company and we don't have bean counters, because we don't have uh, stockholders to where the, any profits has to be moved into their pockets, we're able to do this as a small little company of probably a little less than 30 employees. We're able to do this and make a huge impact on our industry. So that's kind of where all this started, the tool training part. Um, well, I'll tell you, um, I can't. Um, I think say enough or, or thank you and your family enough for the sacrifice you're giving and the product that you're giving back to our industry. Uh, it's second to none. I, I'm not aware. Again, I'm not aware of anybody out there in the industry tool company that is giving back the way you guys are. And I think what's even more impressive is the fact that you do it at no cost to the customer. You do it essentially not for beer meters, but for the right reasons, right? You're out there mm -hmm. uh, because it's one thing to do tool safety around your tools. It's another thing to give mm -hmm. the industry and the customer tool safety around the theory, no matter what product you're using. So it doesn't matter if you're using a beer meters voltage detector or you're using a Salisbury voltage detector or you're, whatever the case may be, the theory behind the process is all the same. And so can't thank you guys enough. Really appreciate what you're doing when it comes to tool safety in our industry. So uh, kudos to you guys for that. Oh, appreciate it, Mark. And, you know, just real quick. So the way, because because of our accuracy of our tools, how I present it, it's it's like you're using the word theory, uh, electric theory. And so the way I present it, it's all hands-on and I get the linemen. Like I usually choose an apprentice, obviously, to help me to where they understand that it is no longer a theory. That's we actually prove that's incorrect. We actually prove that it's their electric reality with the tools. And so it, ta it takes it to a whole nother level of in impacting their minds and impacting their, their brains. And, and they're able to wrap around that thing that they've been told was a theory. And they're able to take, take to their crews, take, take home and take for the rest of their career the fact that it is their electric reality. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing, buddy. I can't second that enough. I've I've heard you. I've seen you. So let's end this little segment of our tailboard talk on that. So if I'm out there listening to this podcast and I say, man, I want my people to hear this message. How do they reach out to you, Brian? How do they get you to come mm -hmm. and do this tool safety presentation for their company? Well, it's first come, first serve. It doesn't okay. matter how big, how little. It doesn't matter if it's a statewide uh, municipality or a statewide organization for electric cooperatives. It doesn't, none of that matters, okay. but we do that as well. It doesn't matter if it's an annual safety meeting or a monthly safety mm -hmm. meeting. We do it all. So none of that matters. So what I do is they can contact me using my email directly, which is brent at beermeters.com. They can contact me directly. And what we do is we're booking up for 2025 now. 2024 is, is full. And we're booking up for 2025 now. And just, I have a three session curriculum that it's an all day experience. The first session, so whoever wants us to come out 
and give them mm -hmm. the presentation. They get a tailor to fit the desired experience that they're looking for. The first session is basically what we kind of talked about in the tailboard. It's line worker, safety, and tool competence. That's session one, usually about an hour and a half, and we take a 15-minute break. And then we have a 15-minute break, and then it's session two. Session two is your electric reality. And in that session, usually about an hour, maybe a little more, we go through it. We just bust it out. And then and during that your electric reality session two, and this is all explained in the curriculum mm -hmm. that I can send anybody. It's all detailed. It's all spelled out. It's, it's really nice. And they can tailor that as well. So in your electric reality, what I do is, as we saw your electric reality and the electrons moving around in the first session, this one is about communication and leadership. And what we do is we actually prove how your electric reality is free energy. And we actually prove how we can connect and have human interconnection and, and, ha and create a line team. That's session two. And it's beautiful. Everybody's like, wow. And I've, got, I've been doing this for so long and talking with thousands of linemen, hundreds and hundreds of service centers around this country. Then what's really neat is session three. Session three is typically after a lunch. So we have, they provide lunch for the crews. We have the contractors there. We have multiple electric cooperatives joining us if it's a statewide. We have multiple munis join us if it's a statewide. And if it's a big company, they'll, they'll send like PG&E. They'll send folks from other service centers. But session three, which PG&E did some of this, and they were like, wow. So um, it's real exciting. So the third session is we go outside. And what we do is we combine session one and we combine session two into the third. And we get on some live line using the tools and we talk about everything. We review and we repeat, but it's hands on. And I like to have apprentices there. I like to have supervisors and foremen. I like to have CEOs on board. I like to have operations managers. I like to have every lead lineman, green lineman, uh, just just got their their papers for journeyman linemen. I like everybody to be there. CEO, Upper Peninsula Power Company, their CEO was there for sessions one and two. And that was awesome. Good to see. But session three, we're outdoors. And if, if something happens, if I catch a key word, that's a trigger word for all this training, okay, is I'll pull everybody back and we'll review a communication uh, point or a bullet point regarding leadership. And we'll review it right on the spot. So we continually use all these sessions one and two while we're in that bucket, while we're in that pad mount, while we're on that three-phase secondary on those blades and we're phasing in from that 13-8 that, uh, over there over to this, this building over here that's being supplied. We do all this right on the spot. And typically, I like everything recorded. And my videographer, we did it. We did it for uh, El Paso Electric Company. Oh my gosh, my videographer will make it all professional, like El Paso Electric Company. We put in some some Mexican guitar, and I mean, it's just really beautiful how how he does it. And we and we we edit it, and we present it, and we give it back to the company to the statewide and they approve it or they say, Hey, we don't want this in there. And we continue editing it. We'll cut it up and make short segments. They get the full thing, whatever they want. And we pay for that too. Wow. And they just get it and they get to keep it. And it's pretty exciting what's going on. Um, but they just contact me and then I'll do the rest. They set up the place. They set up the time. They set up what they want out of the three sessions and we provide it. The start time, the finish time, we stay out of it. It's their time and it's their it's their presentation. Beautiful. They design it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, again, Brent, I can't say enough about that support. Um, I think that's a good uh, intro into kind of my next uh, next plug here for beer meters. So we'll go ahead and, and get that out of the way and then we'll jump into the meat of our podcast. Again, our sponsor today is Beer Meters. Uh, Beer USA Utility Support Assistance is beer's one-of-a-kind, no-cost service to the electric utility 
industry, uh, including professional customer service, technical support, repairs and calibration, live line conferencing, on-site field training, which Brent was just talking about, speaking at tool and work method committee meetings, safety conferences and seminar presentations, and our exclusive 30-day tool trial, which I have personally used. Um, great feature there as well uh, from Beer Meters. Again, you can reach Beer Meters at beermeters.com. Their customer service at customer underscore service at beermeters.com. And again, their phone number 803-786-4839. Beer Meters doing some amazing things in our industry to get support out there for our line workers and our line teams uh, and forming you know, ultimately a great partnership in our industry to, um, you know, get the word out there and make sure that everybody understands uh, what they're using and what they're doing and and how it affects their uh, personal being while they're using this equipment. So um, again, can't thank beer enough. So um, all right. So you probably figured out by now that uh, our special guest today is uh, Mr. Brent Jeffries from Beer Meters. I uh, just happened to incorporate him into our tailboard talk segment as well. So Brent is the uh, vice president of field operations and safety instructor for Beer Meters, uh, who's located in Blythewood, South Carolina. Um, again, where our podcast is coming from today, if you did not catch that earlier. Um, I was here for an ECOS uh, session webinar this morning. You can see the, you know, you can see that, you know, coming up here in, in, in the near future when that gets published as well. We kind of did a welcome already, but, you know, welcome again, Brent. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be our guest on the podcast and, you know, talking with us and sharing your knowledge and wisdom. Uh, thank you, Mark, again. Two thank yous. And again, thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Appreciate everything you do. Cool. So yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, so first of all, I guess, let's talk a little bit about you personally, Brent, and kind of your journey to here, to where you got today. Because obviously, you just didn't wake up 30 years ago and say, I'm going to be a spokesman for beer meters in the utility industry. So what kind of got you to where you are today? Mm-hmm. What what did that journey look like? Well, just skip a lot of the little stuff. In Flagstaff, Arizona, in Northern Arizona University, I spent about two and a half years studying, okay. believe it or not, electrical engineering. And it was, it was a lot of theory. You're right. It was a lot of theory back then. And after about two and a half years, I told my, my mom and Walter Beer, my mom married my dad when I was about five. And uh, so he took me in under his wing and... I decided, hey, you know what? I want to work outside with my hands and I'm going to quit college. And I did. And I started a very successful 29 year uh, working outside landscape company with about we had up to 60 employees at one time. You know, we were making Mm -hmm. a few millions of dollars uh, gross and we were doing very well. My wife and I raised the kids, my three beautiful children, my beautiful wife after Today, 37 years, we just celebrated our anniversary and and it was great. We were all over the Phoenix area, uh, Chandler, Scottsdale, Glendale. I mean, South Phoenix. We, we had I had trucks everywhere. We had tree crews, landscape crews, but uh, irrigation mm-hmm. crew, everything. We did large properties, maintenance properties. I didn't do any residential. Uh, but anyways, you know, I got really good at communicating with people really good because I was the face of the company, board meetings, uh, you know, interviews, fixing things that people had issues with or complaints and making them right, doing the right thing by by, uh, our service. So I learned how to service. I learned how to connect with people and do the right thing. That's one big reason why Walter Beer went 10 years ago when they hired me, they hired me 10 years ago, was because of my business savvy. And that's fine. So after 29 years, they said, hey, you got to sell your company and you got to start helping us. And my wife and I looked at each other and it's like, hey, we've been doing this long enough. Let's let's do something mm-hmm. different. Let's help my family out. Hey, let's do it. And so it brought a lot of skill set, uh, people skill set with me and started working in the company. And like I said, after after a couple of years, I found myself out in the field 
the the best return on investment for the for my family for beer meters and all the employees here was not to have me build tools i was human relations obviously looking at the tools looking at inventory doing all kinds of hats i was mm-hmm. the safety guy for in here uh wearing all kinds of hats and um so i started traveling and i started really looking at the industry dissecting how people think out in this industry. And I threw myself out to the lions and to the wolves. Some of the linemen, man, I tell you what, they will ask you questions that have nothing to do with true line work. And and it's kind of funny. And I don't get that really anymore, but it is funny. And I I would catch it. It is a sight. Because I think a lot of it's some electrical engineering background. I don't know what it is. But anyways, it was funny. But I got thrown to the fire. And when you're thrown into the fire, it's like being thrown in the deep end of the pool. You're either going to sink or you're going to swim. Well, after six months, that's when I went to the family and said, look, we're going to start doing line worker safety and tool training. That's it. And that's going to be the best return on investment for the company is if we start giving this away for free. Because, like I said, the best advertising is to give things away. And guess what? We're going to give something away that's beneficial and going to make them better. And they're going to come home safe. And, hey, if they feel like maybe our tools are good, they'll see them during that presentation. And maybe that'll they'll start thinking, hey, maybe we should buy one. And that 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 usually is what happens. Mm -hmm. It's a no brainer. Right. So I don't even worry about the tools. I just give them safety, period. It's all non-biased, like I said again. So I've been doing that. And then about two and a half years ago, I was sitting, I was sitting in my desk and a little frustrated, to be honest. And I was frustrated. The company's doing great. Beer meters, that was great. But I was frustrated. And, and the line team here, our beer meters team here is just fantastic, better than ever today. And I was frustrated. I was frustrated because I kept getting deeper in the safety of our industry and starting to study OSHA, starting to study 1910.269, starting to study and look at all the safety programs, all the training, constant safety conferences, constant training, the rule book getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And The point of the whole matter is, is I started looking at serious injuries and fatalities and I did not see anything in the industry changing. Zero. And it's like, I was frustrated. I'm wore out, man. So anyways, I came to an uh, incident prevention conference. I started speaking with incident prevention and this idea was given to me just fell out of the sky, literally into my life. I could see the idea. That's how crazy this is. I could see it, but not see it. It was like a vision. You see it, but you can't really see it, but it's there. And that was to start doing Lyman Safety National Webinars. And it's like, but we're going to do national webinars and we're going to do it with other people. It's time that Beard is not out there giving back to the industry alone. It's time that we talk with other people like Institute for Safety and Powerline Construction people. It's time that we stop, talk to the Danny Rains. It's time that we stop, talk to the Billy Bartons. It's time that we talk to the Emily Wilkins at Austin Energy. It's time that we start talking to Lito Wilkins at in uh, California at International Line Builders. And I did at the Incident Prevention Conference just a month after this idea was given to me. And, I, and what's so freaky about this, this whole thing, is everybody, everybody I spoke to said, we're in. We're going to help you. We're going to start giving back. Awesome. So that's where we're at today. Let's build a little bit, and then I'll come back to something else. But let's build a little bit on that ECOS effort or, or you know, the... The, the building of ECOS, right? And so you mentioned the partners and so kind of just continue to build on that a little bit. And, and, and I guess what ECOS looked like two years ago and kind of where we stand now today with this effort. Yeah. 
So if, okay, so first of all, we do have, and, and we're going to be adding a lot more material over the summer because I'm not traveling so much. I'm home. My wife says the summers are hers. So we're going to be developing the electric culture of safety.com, the website it's live. And you're going to see a lot of information in there, how you can register, how you could become a partner of eCause, which now we're almost up to 13,000 partners. Um, and you can see the, the logo behind, I guess I got to point this way behind me. You can see that logo two and a half years ago, there was just electric culture of safety. That's it. That, that was it. There was no partnership right. logos, zero. <laughs> and then Mr. Danny Rains came and he, he would, he did our first official zero zero two, uh, electric system grounding. Beautiful. Two hours friggin' long, Mr. Danny Rains. He cannot stop sharing. Two hours long. We were in a makeshift tent. A storm was coming in. And I'm telling you, man, we had plastic walls. And the wind was blowing. And you can just see the, the wind blowing. And the tent's about to blow away. And you can hear the plastic walls really loud. We had, like, romper room. If you ever watched romper room when you were young... Our, our microphones, our whole system was like Rompy Room Studios, okay? And um, it was very archaic. And But you know what? Grassroots, baby. It's kind of like what we did today when I pulled up that piece of grass. Yep. So this is kind of like a full circle. That was from grassroots. And Mr. Danny Rains, he was a trooper. He held his ground and he delivered a great episode, episode 002. Since then... People started getting on board and the folks that I mentioned, they were guest speakers and they, they started coming. And, and what happens is, as you know, uh, Mark, is, is, is ISPC, your company, they pay for you to come here. They pay for you to be here. Beer didn't pay you nothing. We didn't pay ISPC nothing. You come here. All these companies behind us, they endorse us. They send their speakers in. They send the speakers in. They pay for it. We've had several speakers. This is crazy. That want to give up so badly that even though they're not working for a company at the time, and they're great people too, and mm -hmm. companies should snag these people up because they're willing to give back out of their own pocket, which is amazing. I got a handful of folks that they are available. Anyways, um, it just started building the crescendo and people started seeing the benefit of getting involved and receiving all these webinars. Now, and now today we have uh, eCause Livewire where we have podcasts and, and all these folks, I think we're yeah. at 008 as well, um, Mark, which is kind of crazy, but it's true, which is strange, but that's the truth. And we have all these resources that are totally available uh, to people for no cost. Not only that, but check this out. You, I, I don't think I've shared this with you, Mark. Um, I have folks around the industry that they email me and say, hey, Brent, we're looking for a speaker for our safety, our annual safety event or our safety conference. Do you have any ideas? And I'll ask them, hey, what topic are you looking at to fill? And they'll tell me the topic and I'll send them three or four folks on that topic and Choose. You contact them and ask. Maybe they're available. Maybe they're not. But here's folks. And so and so we have become a resource. I've had folks come to me and say, hey, Brent, how can we better our safety program? We want you to actually look at our safety program and I'll ask, hey, let me sit. Let me sit in on your tailboard, your job brief. Let me sit on and see what I see. Let me let me get get a feel for what's going on there and the dynamics of that. Just like you did yesterday. I don't want you changing up, trying to look all, all fantastic. And like, this is the best tailboard of the year. No, I just want to see how you do things. And uh, so they're looking, they're looking for little things. As far as our expertise, we can only give what we're experts at. We don't want to get into anybody's wheelhouse. And that's the great thing about ECOS. That's the great thing about being with beer meters is we don't get involved with anybody else's wheelhouse there. We don't get involved with uh, their income and the way that they support their families, uh, their businesses. For instance, incident prevention, they actually endorse electric culture of safety and they allow folks to get on your live Zoom link mm. today, Mark. And there are some cuss people. I saw some. There are some cuss people that are were on it today and they receive continuing education 
through the certified utility safety professionals organization and incident prevention, all that. So what we're doing is we're net, we're forming a network. So everybody stays individual and everybody respects everybody else's jobs and what they do as individual organizations or as individual people. And so we don't step on any toes. We're forming a network and it's becoming a line, what I call a line team. That's what we're forming here, Mark. And ISPC, you guys yourselves, you guys send about eight to nine speakers every single year now, two years in a row. And you guys are serious about this. And you guys, like your, your, your webinar today, oh my gosh, um, st practicing structure and, and structural and practicing and all that you brought today, your outline was, I don't know what to say about it. It was perfect. It was beautiful. So, but you guys are doing that and sharing that freely to our industry. But see, what we're doing is we're building up that support. We're building up the partnership. And that's what this truly is. All these people that endorse ECOS behind me, like ISPC, all these people, they don't pay nothing. We don't give them nothing. They're just endorsing this line team partnership that we're forming nationwide and actually through Canada now too. Um, and it's, it's just... It's a journey. You know, I'll go back when dad, dad hired me and he said, Brent, he said, he said, I want our name to be a household name throughout the industry. And he wanted that to be a household name, beer, beer meters, beer and associates. He wanted that his name to be a household name. He wanted that as a legacy for what we bring to the industry. And I said, Dad, I said 10 years ago, I said, I don't know how we're going to do this because I just went to the International Lyman's Rodeo. I just went to this this uh, seminar. I just went to the safety meeting. I just went to train these linemen at the service center. And hardly nobody knows about beer meters. And I was actually mad. I was actually angry in a righteous way. OK, let's just put that way. It was righteous anger. And I told him, that I said, Dad, one day your name is going to be a household name. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And guess what? Guess what, Mark? Through electric culture of safety, through our quality, through our line team here, through the tools, through our training, through everything we're doing, building a line team nationwide. My goal is that this becomes a worldwide thing. Because there's people getting killed in third world countries, like unbelievable. They don't even use PPE, some of these countries. It's just insanity. And we as a line team, we're going to change that together. Okay? So that's what's going on here. Awesome. That's what's happening. And you guys are part of it too. Well, I think uh, that's probably a good uh, segue uh, into um, – I guess you could say maybe a little bit of an announcement. I don't know if I'd go that far as of yet, but um, so in when it comes to building this partnership and, and giving back to our industry, um, I guess maybe since this is your um, mm -hmm. this is your playground here. Um, Maybe I'll let you kind of let the cat out of the bag as far as. Uh, uh, no, no, because ISPC, you guys are teaming up, man. And you guys okay. are the you guys are the power behind this vision okay. of this part of it. I want you to let the cat out of the bag, buddy. All right. That's fair. Um, so um, what uh, Brent and I are kind of alluding to is uh, ISPC and beer meters uh, are in the process of forming a partnership uh, in building an actual training yard, training facility uh, here at beer meters in South Carolina. And so we're working with some other partners uh, to identify some equipment needs and things of such. Uh, and the vision behind this is to have a, uh, I'll call it uh, three discipline. So substation, overhead, and underground, all in the same training yard 
uh, that we can offer not only to our ECOS partners, uh, but to the industry as a whole, the ability to come and have a world-class training facility uh, where your people can learn uh, whatever it is uh, or whatever craft uh, is your expertise, right? If you're, if you're a substation person, you'll be able to come and, and, and learn and, and go through different classes for substations. The same with overhead, underground. You'll be able to see beer meters, world-class facility here and, and see how they do things behind their meters. You'll be able to use their metering equipment, right? And I think the other thing is not only will training here be craft training, but you'll also be able to come and get things like leadership training and those type of things as well, safety training. We're in the early stages of this partnership uh, in developing our vision here of, of what this is going to look like. You know, we'll stay tuned, you know, hopefully here over the next several months, we can we can get this thing really defined and, and have a, uh, a path moving forward you know, to bring this thing uh, back to uh, our line team that we're working to develop. I guess you can say the cat's out of the bag. I don't know, Brent, if you want to add anything to that uh, message, but go ahead. Yeah. So uh, including in all this, we're looking to do some inside, a secondary, some underground, some fault, fault work, cable ID, under underground in a pat, in a, in a vault, in a, in a, in a pad mount, just just all kinds of dynamics. We want it, we basically we want to kind of have it all. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have we're looking at getting a having some partners donate everybody helping together. Perfect. We don't want somebody to stand out on this. That's that's one thing we don't want. We don't want somebody to be the superhero because everybody is a superhero, and we want everybody to understand that they are superheroes each individual and each organization and us as a line team. So we want this to be a collaborated effort nationwide. And we want it, we want to start here in South Carolina. Guess why? Because that's where we're at. So and we have land. We have a lot, we have a big lot that's all ready, a live line training center to this day. And we use it now for training today. But we want to bring all this equipment in. We want to move things around, better efficiency, and bring as much in as possible. So we need a, we need these partners to step up. We need an engineering firm to help us out, to step up with some of their expertise to develop this. Uh, we have a large lot that they can kind of look at. And Mark, you, your folks there at ISPC, yeah. you all know yeah. what exactly needs to happen because what were you guys doing in Louisiana years ago? Right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. So you know it works, right? Right. Yeah, you know it. So the the whole thing, we talked about this when we had the top down this morning because I forgot my laptop. <laughs> so yep. we had a little extra yep. time getting it getting a talk and talking about we actually gosh, I, I think we spent an hour talking about this this vision alone, the training yard. And, you know, the bucket truck, some transmission, doing some back feed and get some transmission, uh, some three phase transmission, um, getting all that going and uh, bringing these folks in to where we have qualified trainers, qualified trainers, both in communication and both both in leadership and qualified trainers as far as application, live line application all in one to where when we get out there in that field. And we do the magic and we're in that that your electric reality that these these trainers are equipped to recognize when they need a stop and they need a, a session on communication. They need to back off from that line and they need to regroup, huddle up a line team huddle. They need to huddle up and have a little job briefing on not just the physical electric reality, the electron part of it, but we need to do a job brief and a little job huddle for that communication leadership skill that we don't want to let slide. So that's what we're going to do um, at this training gotcha. yard. So it's going to be, hey, remember we said this, Mark, if you build it, they yes. will come, right? You've already proven in history that this works. You already proved it in past history. 
So we already know this is going to be successful. We already know the impact this will have on the industry as a whole, where folks can sign up for a particular date and they can travel from this side of the country or this country, a different country, and come here on a specific date for all these skills and, and come and, and together and we make it a day. We can make it a day. We do some indoor, we do some outdoor, we do some hands-on. We have a nice lunch provided. In the middle, we take the right breaks. Uh, we have an indoor conference room. We got all these things, this vision. This vision is going to be very professional. And, and the partners that we've spoken to thus far, it's the best state-of-the-art equipment possible in the industry. So if, if you're here in this podcast and you guys know who you are, but some of you can donate as well and haven't heard this vision, step up, contact Mark, contact Mark, call, contact him at ISPC. He's, uh, uh, he's the operations. He's the director of operations now. And, and this vision, he's helping to direct this operation, this vision. And the idea is, to, and we already know it's going to work. That's what's crazy. The idea is to get this started in the East Coast, South Carolina. And then we want to head to the Midwest and we want to develop it there with the same partners. And anybody can jump in. If you look at the behind me, if you look at those partners, a lot of these guys back here, they didn't jump on until maybe oh a year ago or six months ago, yep. or some of these guys, we got an updated one now with even more partners. They would jump on last month. <laughs> we got two from last, just last month. Because who has done this before? So they're skeptical. Is this really going to be a movement that's going to stick? Is this going to be a movement that's truly going to take place? Are we really going to do it this time and have a line team? Are we? You know, and we are. And we're going to do it Midwest next. So then the next step will be the West Coast. Awesome. No, I, th I think I, I, it's going to be game changing. I think it's just another step in the yep. in the process of building this electric utility industry line team, right? And getting everybody to contribute and help each other. Uh, we've said it. I've said it on this podcast. I've heard it come out of your mouth, Bren. Mm -hmm. I've heard uh, you hear it all the time, right? You cannot no one entity can do this thing alone. There, there's no magic silver bullet out there. It's going to take a partnership across the entire industry to stop getting people hurt and to make sure that everybody has the mm -hmm. resources they need to allow their people to learn yes. and be comfortable yes. in the jobs they do day in and day out. And, you know, move their company in a positive direction and get us out of that plateau we've been stuck in as an industry for probably the last eight to 10 years where, uh, you know, I think our numbers are good, but obviously if we're still hurting people and, you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately still killing some people, uh, we got to do better. We got to find ways. We can't do things the same way we've always done them. We got to find better ways, more efficient ways, and, yeah. and opportunities to move that needle downward and get as close to that zero mark as we can. You know, like I said this morning, if, if we strive for perfect practice, yeah. right? And if we strive for being perfect, we're more than likely never going to get there because humans are just not perfect, right? But maybe we can land on excellent. And if if every organization in this partnership gets to that yeah. excellent level, I think we can walk into the sunset at our retirement years and say, hey, we did our part. We moved that needle uh, in a positive direction. And there's a lot less people getting hurt than there was when we started. So I want to give another shout out. Um, so ECOS, the electric culture of safety, uh, as, we, as we've talked, is a grassroots nationwide safety partnership bringing the electric utility industry together in unity building a line team uh, ecos partners sharing at no cost to your line crews sharing their knowledge experiences expertise and passion for the common goal of ensuring our heroes of light return home safely to their family crew when the task is complete 
ECOS now over 12,000 partners, and as Brent mentioned, uh, approaching 13,000. With monthly linemen safety national webinars with relevant topics of communication, leadership, organization, training, etc., Again, uh, I think Brent said this earlier, but you can email uh, safety training at beermeters.com. Um, you can go to the electric culture of safety.com. Uh, as Brent mentioned earlier, there's now uh, ECOS has its own website, so you can check things out there. Um, together, we're going to change our electric culture of safety. Brent, we're kind of coming up on the hour mark here. Again, I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to sit down and chat with us. Is there any, I guess I could say, parting uh, words or, or closing words that you want to kind of leave everybody with as we kind of end the, end the show? Yeah, so, so after spending all this time, eight years in the industry, face to, face to face, so it's a submersion. You know, the best way to learn a foreign language is to go to where they speak the foreign language. The best way is not to sit in a classroom. No, I learned Spanish when I learned in Arizona because I work with the folks that spoke Spanish. And guess what? Hardworking folks, man. All respect to those folks. And I learned Spanish. My wife and I went to Tulum, Mexico, just a few weeks ago. And I had a fun with those people because I learned the language. Here's the deal. And this is one thing I say at the conferences and all the safety instruction that I share. The one thing I share is this rule book is a great rule book and we need to follow these rules. We got to keep these rules. That's no doubt about it, but it's the what. It's the what you got to do, okay? The thing that that rule book doesn't discuss, and, and it just won't, okay, it, it won't happen, is the how and the why behind those rules, okay? And what's happening in this industry, and I know this is what's happening, and Billy Martin, when I first saw him uh, in a, after two, two uh, linemen were killed several years ago in New York, I watched his video. And his video was beautiful as far as um, recognizing your environment, situational awareness. But there's a situation awareness that we're not, we're missing. And that situational awareness that we're missing is one another. The situational awareness that we are not talking about and is lacking in our industry is each other. And we're right there. It's The answer has been in front of our face ever since birth. And that answer, the situational awareness that we need to tap into, and it's always been this way, and it'll never be any different, is one another. And until then, nothing will change. But we're going to do it. We're going to be the change. We're going to live the change. And we're going to do the change, Mark. And I appreciate everything, man. Appreciate you, brother. Perfect. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think, um, you know, we'll continue to work at this thing and, and move this thing forward. And great things are, are yet to happen. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and close this thing out. Um, so the views and opinions of the podcast are the personal viewpoints of the participants may not necessarily reflect the stance of the Institute for Safety and Powerline Construction and its staff. It's highly recommended to consult your company management before implementing any actions or policy changes. Please support the sponsors bringing this podcast and content to you. Again, Brent, we thank you for everything you and your family are doing here at Beer Meters and the ECOS uh, partnership. Uh, great things. Love it, man. Look forward to working together a lot more. For everybody at ISPC and Beer Meters, we'll catch you next time on ISPC Tailboard Talks. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.